it's time for your Friday fail. Start with All right, so all these people thought they had the perfect plan, but somewhere along the line, woo, 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 that perfect plan went completely sideways, and it became an Uber. Yes. An ultra. No. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Dare I say it. Mega. No. no. Here no. we go. You I think great I boss. might actually be tone deaf. I really do. I think I might be. I think, you know. If there are dogs howling in the bike stand. Mixed in everybody else's voices. <laughs> Nobody knows. Uh, Friday Fail Story sponsored by. Moritz Royce Jewelry, the official jeweler of the Rizzuto okay, Show. Okay, this one, I, I don't even like doing this story because I hate a, a fail for such a tragic thing. But there is a positive message to come out of it. And Moon sent me this yesterday. Uh, this 18-year-old kid from Sacramento, the baseball player. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's brutal. Terrible. 18-year-old kid from Sacramento lighting off fireworks with his buddies on July 4th when one malfunctioned and exploded in his hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had to have his right hand amputated. Oh, bummer. And the real tragedy here is that the kid was a high school baseball standout with plans to play in college. Uh -huh. Like three-time all-conference player in high school. <sighs> Over. And yes, the fail story because he got his hand blown off in a fireworks accident, spinning it into a positive He's hoping that his story could help stop this type of thing from happening yeah. in the future. I hope so. I thought, dude, I thought you were going to say, spinning it into a positive, Jim Abbott. Well, well I mean, yeah, there's he did have a no-hit. Remember Jim Abbott pitched a no-hitter? Dude, he had an impressive MLB career. I mean, yeah. that guy was around the show for over 10 years easy. I think the vast majority of the audience is like, what? And, but but like, baseball Abbott, people went, ooh. Jim Abbott had, had uh, one hand. Mm. And uh, he would take his baseball glove, so when he pitched, and he would then put it on his other hand mm -hmm. and field and then figure out how to how to throw. When Wow. Going to go ahead and say... Pitch the no-hitter. It's uh, probably not likely that this guy will be the second Jim Abbott, because Jim Abbott, I'm pretty sure Jim Abbott was born like that. Yeah, yeah. The family was asked what type of fireworks uh, he was lighting at the time. They didn't want to talk about the specifics, but enough to blow his hand off. I'm not even going to hit the fail on that. I, you know, I, I feel bad enough that we even did the story, but I want to spin it as a positive like the family is. Hey. Awareness. Yeah, man. Don't be stupid. Man, right. that stuff is fun, but you really do have to watch yourself. you got to be careful. Of course. Of course. Now, this one. Yes, tragic ending, but I will hit the fail story on this. Okay. The fail story sounder. 34-year-old guy found dead inside the fridge of a Minnesota home on June 26th. Why was he in the fridge? Because he was hiding from the police. Okay. Brandon Lee Bushman had allegedly run into a basement inside a home because of a possible police presence. He went into the freezer to hide, not realizing the latch mechanism was broken. Oh, wow. Unable yeah. to open the door to the freezer, which was not on at the time. And he died in the freezer because he could not get out. So he suffocated? Failed. Isn't there a seal? Isn't there a seal on the, on the, like a, like when you shut a freezer door, a fridge door? Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be airtight. Isn't it airtight? Yeah, I mean, you hear it like sort of thing. At least well, ours does. Well, yeah, do you remember, uh, I mean, there was like a rash of kids like dying in freezers or fridges when people would leave them out. On the curb for pickup for for uh, oh yeah garbage. well that was when they had like a full on latch now you can push most of them open but those old school ones have the, doo -doo, you know, the well metal. then the law was you had to take the door off before you put it out is that that yeah. was made a law wow. that's that why was I made a law in the river that was made a law at least where I when I grew was growing up back east like that was, I don't know if it was a nationwide law but it, or a New York law but it was a law. That if you were to put your fridge out at the curb, the door had to be off because yeah. kids were dying. Wow. Really? Stupid I don't remember kids. that. That's crazy. Dude, I'll tell you, there was um, certain times of year, especially after floods or different things, like uh, you go down to certain rivers in Missouri and you find stacks of, uh, you know, float the, all the driftwood and all that. And there's always a fridge. Yep. There's always a doorless fridge. Mm hmm I don't know how these end up in rivers so much, but like, mm. oh, what do we do with this thing? <laughs> uh, uh, take it to the river. 
Hey, cool to float on or, you know, ra- like a raft. I yes. mean, they got like the. I'm sorry, what? A refrigerator? Oh, like the door? Oh, the door. I'm not talking about the door. I'm oh, talking whole about fridge. Full oh, fridges whole fridge. end up on banks all the time. You're like, well, what the yeah. Heck? I mean, put a fridge in the water. That'll float. Yeah. No way. A fridge. Absolutely. You, think, you don't think the weight and all the nope. crap on the bottom? It's like a vessel. I mean, the back? No, if you heavy. open the door, are there, like inside a fridge you is... You're turning a fridge into a canoe, Riz? Yeah. yeah. I have some New York talk right there, I think. I don't know, man. Yeah, a fridge will float. If, it, if, the, if the body doesn't fill up with water... I, mean, I guess so. That's why they end up on banks and things. Huh. Uh, a that German man has died wild. following a botched penis enlargement. That's right. Botched penis enlargement. A 32-year-old guy who uh, we don't know his name uh, reportedly had silicone oil injected into his dingling by a catering worker posing as a medic. Oh, great. He succumbed to sepsis. So the man uh, alleged to have carried out the procedure had no medical qualifications. In fact, he advertised his injections through an online ad. Well, this seems like it's on the up and up. So the victim received the injection into his penis and scrotum at an apartment, not at an, not at a doctor's office. Again, seems everything seems legit here. <laughs> uh, the victim reportedly began experiencing breathing problems shortly after going back home. Wound up going to a hospital. Spent months in agony in an intensive care ward. Prosecutors claim the injection caused the victim to suffer sepsis, which is an overreaction of the body's immune system because of infection. The silicone oil ended up in this guy's bloodstream. Oh, my goodness. And he died. Failed. Now, liquid silicone injections for genital enlargement have been used for years, despite the risks involved. So they work by uh, provoking the body's immune system to react to the foreign substance by forming a thick mass. Uh, this, in theory, increases the size and thickness of the tissue injected, giving the men the bigger dong they desire. But is the risk worth the reward? I mean, that's a thick mass. Sure is. You know? I love this story. Last Monday uh, last Monday afternoon, a guy walked into a nail salon in Atlanta, or, uh, ordered everyone on the floor, please surrender your money. Oh, yeah. I saw that. I saw this. <laughs> this not one enough. person. Not one person. Dude. Not one crowded salon, not one customer, not an employee listened. I in the video they completely ignored the guy. <laughs> like it is, ama- it is amazing. Yeah. It's one of my favorite videos I think I've it ever seen. It is so good, <laughs> and it is so the vibe of a nail salon. The guy walks in. This is a robbery. He's armed. Right. Nobody listened. Everybody's like filing, like looking at you, like shut up. One woman who was near the door decided to leave while the robber was trying to take control of the situation. That was basically the only movement there. The surveillance video shows the guy pacing inside with, with, with a gun in his hand. Eventually, he leaves with zero, nada, nothing. <laughs> fail. Bye. Nothing. Oh, fail. Like, you need to take something just so you don't leave empty hands. Yeah, I'm taking this comb, or I'm taking this... I'm taking this OPI nail polish. Yeah. That's it. I'm taking the barbicide, <laughs> whatever the blue stuff is. Oh, man. So what is it? Are we just well, so... He still, well, he, the police would still like to speak with him. Because... Was it confirmed that it was a weapon? Because it was in a bag. Uh, it, even if you pretend it's a weapon, it's yeah, a weapon yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the commission of a crime. Yeah. Police would like to speak with him. Like, are we just uh, are we just so overdone with robberies and crime and mass shootings in this nation that we're just ignoring? Now we're just like, whatever, man. I, I guess the dude just must have come off, like, not threatening right. at all. Right. How <laughs> little was this guy man. actually? Is he like the neighborhood, like, you know, brother that's always just up to shenanigans and, you know, he's just trying something new? Uh, he's like, oh, oh, it's Brad. Brad oh, again. Brad, Brad, shut up, Brad. Brad's shut harmless. Okay, yeah. Brad. well, Brad's harmless. He ain't going to do anything anyway. Yeah. Just ignore Brad. Your mother's back here, Brad. <laughs> He'll eventually just leave. Uh, security guard at a Walmart in Alpena, Michigan, saw a 54-year-old guy, uh, Andrew Fernelius, steal dog food and other pet stuff from the store five different times in the past year. How did they know it was Andrew? Because Dummy gave his license to the pharmacy to pick up some medicine before stealing everything. <laughs> He's been charged with first-degree retail fraud. I feel like that's the kind of criminal that I would be. Just real dumb. I mean, that is just, I I don't have a criminal mind, man. (laughs) You don't don't got a criminal heart, Donnie. That's true. Now, I'm assuming this was a guest, uh, hopefully not the groom. Cops in Iowa got a report this month about a man laying in the middle of an intersection around 4 in the morning. When they get there, they find 25-year-old Lane Schreuers still passed out in the road. Now, he'd obviously been drinking, uh, and so he was, he was out. He was snoring in the middle of the road. 
They woke him up. He explained he'd, he'd just come from a wedding reception at a golf resort and a casino nearby. He admitted he had drank a lot that night. The resort is three miles from where they found him. Wow. Wow. And there's no mention of DUI. So he apparently decided to walk home and got tired along the way. I get it. And just passed out in the road. Just, I'm going to take a nap right here. This looks good. Man. We parted down at a friend's house or near a friend's house. He was living in Dallas. Kind of a cool, like, apartment kind of thing. It was like maybe like a condo or something, townhouse. And uh, so all the buildings kind of looked the same. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, I'd say a mile or two down the road, the last spot that we were at. And one of our guys decided to hang back. Hey, I'll, you know, I'll catch, a, I'll catch a ride or something. This is, this is probably before Uber or right around the beginning of that. I'll catch a ride. Well, we all woke up in the morning. And we're getting coffee. And we're like, where is uh, so-and-so? And, -so? and uh, he wasn't there. And then while we're having our coffee, we're like, how do we get a hold of him? His phone's dead. We're trying to call the guy. His phone's dead. We don't know. What are we going to do? We're going to have to backtrack or figure something out. I don't know what the heck happened. And then there's a knock on the door. And there he was. We said, where have you been? He said, uh, in the rock ditch right over there. Yeah. He said he walked all the way back to the complex, couldn't remember the number, so he the laid down laid down in the irrigation ditch and fell asleep there. Well, this guy's lucky nobody ran him over. <laughs> like He was in the middle of the road, and one of the roads at the intersection is a highway. <laughs> so he was arrested for public intoxication, but he got off pretty easy. He paid a $250 fine and a $100 in court costs. But... Fail. 34-year-old guy in Kansas City arrested last Friday after stealing a Kansas City Area Transportation Authority bus. <laughs> well, they wouldn't have missed it. I, I, I can understand why so he, he tried. He, he stole the bus just after midnight in the Tower Homes neighborhood. A uh, cop spotted him heading north on 71, followed, uh, followed with uh, lights and sirens until he pulled over to avoid stop sticks. Officers had to pry the doors open and forcefully remove him from the bus. Uh, Moon, was he hammered? Uh, you betcha. You betcha. <laughs> you betcha. As far as, he's, he's already got a bunch of DUIs under his belt. So in addition to facing charges for stealing the bus... He'll be looking at another DUI charge. The bus was undamaged. Hmm. Failed. So filthy rich people, they can't even tell you how much milk costs, right? Oh, so I'm not yeah. surprised they don't know Amazon drivers don't always show up in a big blue van. So a 30-year-old woman named Allentown, uh, near Allentown, Pennsylvania, delivering packages in her own car. This is earlier this month. You know, Amazon has a, pro a program called Amazon Flex where you could do that, like take your own car and deliveries. I've seen it in, in my yeah. neighborhood. So one of her stops was a huge mansion owned by a 70-year-old media tycoon named Stephen Saslow. 14,000 square feet, 72-acre estate. Indoor pool with a retractable roof. This guy's got money. Woof. It's a security gate. So when she showed up to drop off his package... He had to let her in first. But then even after he did, he pulled the gun on her. It sounds like he was worried she wasn't really with Amazon because she was in a 2019 Dodge minivan. Oh. So she must have said, it's Amazon, and he's expecting the Amazon van to pull up. Right. But a 2019 Dodge minivan pulls up. So before she even got out of the car, he's pointing a short-barreled shotgun at her. Holy smokes. She told the cops she put her hands up, let him know, I'm but Amazon. I'm I'm looking and for Ray Finkel. And my two kids are in the car. Oh my gosh, really? Her kids were there? Not my kids, her kids. Oh. I know, that's what I said. Her kids were there? He had the shotgun in one hand, grabbed the package with the other. Then he kept pointing it at her and told her to get off his property. She left and called the cops. Oh. He's facing charges for reckless endangerment. What fail? I'm sure his defense is, I, how am I supposed to know that that's not somebody pretending and about to rob me on my property. Now, I'm not saying it's right, but if you really have no idea and you're suspecting everybody or everything, I, mean, I can understand a little fear. I'm not pulling shotguns. I mean, he held her at gunpoint and yeah. took the package. I mean, that's Ray Finkel's parents. That's Ray Finkel's dad <laughs> oh, through, the, through the hole. Yikes. Hey, it certainly wasn't one of these things. I say, I saw these uh, one of these yesterday oh, on 44. Band? No, it's the new ones Electric? made by Rivian. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, no, I haven't my, seen those. This thing pulled out in front of us, and uh, I go, what the heck is that? Look at that. That's awesome. My son's like, I guess those are the new electric ones. And, uh, yeah, Rivian Prime Vans, these things are out and about now. Yeah, cool. Around us. I haven't seen those yet. Uh, around 11 in the morning on Tuesday, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, police pulled over uh, Microsoft, Microsoft, pulled over a motorcycle <laughs> driven by a 20-year-old. He was doing 106. Ooh. 
Hauling. Pretty fast. Doing 106 on the highway. Like at a 60? 60 mile per hour speed zone? I'm I'm assuming uh, 106 anywhere you go is is over the speed limit. Dude had a revoked uh, driver's license. Turns out he just had his driver's license revoked. I mean, when I say just like minutes earlier, uh, he got pulled over on his bike just after leaving the courthouse after being sentenced for speeding. Now he's facing new charges, including speeding, driving under the uh, under suspension, and careless driving. Fail. Or another charge for being an idiot. <laughs> I was driving into work today at like 4 a.m. and motorcyclists on 270 just, whoo, like sped by going 100 over. I was like, Damn. Yeah, all right. Good thing Open I was paying attention. Huh? You know? And uh, finally, I, I don't fully get how the physics, like, work on this, but, you know, but it's probably easier in, in the sweatiest, stickiest month of the year. Okay, so uh, a 24-year-old guy, Michael Brandon, got arrested on Wednesday after he used stolen, a stolen credit card to book a 17-night stay at a vacation home near Clearwater, Florida. Cops found a bunch of credit cards, IDs, and Social Security cards that belonged to other people. Now, while they were looking, I'm um, sorry, while they were booking him into jail, they asked if he had any drugs or contraband on him. And he said no. But then they strip-searched him and found a 22 caliber bullet hidden under his dingles. Yes, the family jewels. What? Yeah, it shoved up there under the dingleberries. Like, was it? No, it, under his his uh, nutsack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a great <laughs> word. Yes. I mean, I was trying to be classy about it, but okay. Hang on a minute. I'm trying to visualize dingles. this as a woman. Well, <laughs> like, you can. Well, again, it's again, like it is the sweatiest and stickiest month of the year, so I'm assuming it just stuck up. It's there. like if you lick a like a lick a card and you put <laughs> it on your forehead. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, that makes sense. That's right. I it, it's one bullet. I don't know why you wanted to sneak a bullet into jail, but the officer who had who had to retrieve it uh, noted it hadn't been fired, so it was a live round. On uh, top of the fraud stuff, they tacked on a felony charge for introducing contraband into a detention facility. Uh, yeah. Weird. Hmm. Weird, right? Fail. And those are your Friday fail stories. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks to everyone who did stupid things this week. Uh, never a shortage of stories. Appreciate it. <laughs>